we've been working on the same weapons, directed energy weapons, often referred to as do mind control weapons. Chinese are working on them. The Russians and U.S. have had them for a long time. <coughs> but dialed-in lethality the, the, uh, is uh, what's happening oftentimes for those that show mild traumatic brain injury. Uh, it can be done through cavitation effects using sound waves, highly unlikely in the Cuba embassy attacks. Um, and it can be done through microwave directed energy uh, if it's amplified. And in fact, there's something called the Frey effect. Uh, the Army had it on their website called V2K, and that's how a lot of people refer to it, uh, that can pipe voices into someone's head. You can't plug your ears. It actually vibrates the brain, which is like many concussions, through the small pulses that expand the tissue and then contracts it, then goes to the inner ear where they can hear it. Um, if you just turn that up, it causes brain damage. You're heating the brain. Uh, so there are a lot of ways, just uh, and it, a weapon, for example, that I think is reclassified now, but it was done at the University of Nevada as a non-lethal weapon uh, that resonates the dopamine uh, cells of your brain, producing cells of your brain, um, and it floods it. Now, it, it worked. They, the Air Force reclassified it. Um, Floods your brain with dopamine? Yeah, dopamine dump. And um, that incapacitates the adversary uh, in a non-lethal way. Not totally non-lethal, though. If you have too much neurotransmitter in your brain, it's a neurotoxin. It will also cause brain damage. So brain damage can occur uh, through these weapons that are non-lethal in many, uh, many different ways. Do you have any way of describing or do you, is there any evidence anywhere that could explain something that's happening, like to describe what Len is describing is happening to him? Is there any sort of weapon that you're aware of that can do that? Uh, sure. It's very complex. Um, but if you cognitively model someone, you have a brain print, like a fingerprint. And if you use autocorrelation techniques, uh, and there's a way, and we'll just kind of wave our hand, functional MRI that you can do at a distance over the earth, uh, you have every human being brain pattern. You can control 8 billion brains on the planet, potentially read them. Pre-crime. I mean, you can imagine during warfare, uh, it'd be useful for a number of objectives. So in that situation, you'd want it continuous. And you'd beam the entire earth over it. You're like a cell phone. Your brain is a circuit. So if you're dialed in, once you have a cognitive model, um, you would never be able to escape it under the magnetosphere or ionosphere. Um, it, it's worldwide. And you can ask, you know, a number of people in every country, is it happening in your country? And they're just like the exact same symptomology. Other than the symptomology and the vast amount of people in government and so forth that experience these same symptoms, what other evidence do we have of technology like this? Well, <laughs> I sent you some articles and papers. Uh, I, there are just many books. You can, you can go on Google. Um, the difference between, uh, I just don't believe these diplomats are being hit in, in, by a drive-by microwave weapon. I think the brain damage is being done because the brain rewires itself more rapidly. Let's say if you lose your eyesight, then your hearing and taste of smell, uh, your taste and smell get better. Your brain adapts faster. Mm -hmm. During this adaptation process, uh, you can insert in an external signal, sort of like hiving brains together. Ex insert an external signal. Yes, uh, an electromagnetic signal. Um, and how, how would you do that, you might ask. And the details get very complex. Um, but there are several patents that you can access that talk about um, inserting a signal into 
the micro circuits and macro circuits of the brain. Now you got to know those patterns, the lock and key mechanism. Otherwise it won't affect you. It will only affect the target brain. If the brain print fits, um, the brain print. Yeah. The signature. Everyone has a unique one. Hmm. And, uh, you ask, well, how do you broadcast this over the world? How do we talk to nuclear submarines? underwater how do you explain this is happening to len how do you rationalize it um i can because uh one it, it follows uh, uh the symptomology like i said of all these others right. but for me um i don't know if uh he wants me to mention this uh let me ask him in private hold on okay yeah Uh, can I talk? Um, here's how I do my studies, and I I wanted to find the commonalities, but I have to throw away the ones I'm uncertain about that are true targets. You know, maybe there's natural schizophrenia. There's a whole bunch of chemical imbalances, et right, cetera. Right. These weapons can actually induce and mimic all those diseases and effects. Um, but the conversations the scripts they're called are always the same and i've heard them all they're slightly tailored for each individual but they're scripts um and they're meant to confuse the very derogatory uh that's just typical breakdown if, you know if you've ever been to boot camp you're a you're a worm until you're mm -hmm. part of the team and why would you want to break down the ego of that person to rebuild it so this gets into creating Manchurian candidates, split personality spies, and uh, information couriers, people that will carry messages to other places without being aware that they're actually doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can imagine the misperception that is caused by this. And a lot of people, uh, the, a lot of uh, the targets when they're interviewed, are tricked into believing ev evil aliens have abducted their brains. Um, demons. They're tricked. Yes. How are they tricked? <laughs> They're told. By who? By the voices, the V2K. So they'll say, we're the Russian government, we're the Chinese government, we're evil aliens, we're Satan's, you know, satanic ritual abuse. Uh, we're, and I've heard all the stories. One guy believed it was... Uh, some 14-year-old kid with an Xbox that lived next door. The trickery really is that great when you're under hypnosis that people will believe something other than a massive government uh, could do this. Um, and so, anyway, what you know, our inter my interview with Len, he very well described a typical breakdown script that's used on almost all the TI victims. TI stands for targeted individuals. Um, some of them are pretty crazy. They go, they have names like Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz. Um, and those are the confusion tactics. And when they're breaking down the ego of the human through all the pains and tortures and, and the verbal breakdown, um, these are typical CIA torture scripts. I mean, <laughs> Kubark manual. Mm. The, and they do good cop, bad cop interrogation called Jeff and Mutt. And uh, they go right through the list, right? Just textbook. So whoever the handlers are on the other side of this synthetic telepathy, they're following the handbook perfectly. And they've been trained. Mm.